Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Today is the day. We're gonna start tearing apart Kyle's bike. We have the upgraded controller, the motor, and his battery. We're gonna start tearing this thing apart pretty soon here. We've never done it before. We've looked up a couple videos on how to do it, but we are not 100% sure. Hopefully, as this video goes on, it's gonna go smooth. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. It's not too many bolts. I really think this is gonna be a super fun process. I'm personally super excited about this. I love getting into things like this. It's a fun little project, you know, just to keep us busy. And I know Kyle's pumped about it because his bike is gonna be a beast. For now, unfortunately, he's still waiting on his tires. He's gonna be upgrading these bad boys to 19s and he's still waiting on his front forks. So once he gets those in, we'll have another video installing those, going through the whole process and what you gotta do, you know, to replace those parts. Now we're gonna stick to the motor, controller, and the battery is self-explanatory. But I'm super excited about it and we're gonna get to it. First things first, we gotta get this bike flipped upside down. That way we can take the controller off and get up underneath it. That's awesome. Now let's get this thing flipped up. Pull the back brake and pull it up and it'll move it over. Let it out a little bit. I'm not gonna want to crush though. I'll try to pick the back up. You want to put something underneath it? Under the seat? You want to slide that under? Under the seat. And just do it right up under the seat. Perfect. You did. Four millimeters. <laughs> so, it takes a four millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and take these four bolts off. I'm not sure if this holds the controller on or if it's just a plate. Bring you in. We got one, two, one here, two here. And then I'm not oh, sure if we need off. these two. But... Take, take okay, we also gotta take <laughs> off this. Um, that's gonna help us get to the motor when we go to take that out. So we're basically taking all this stuff off and putting all new stuff in besides this. So let's get it. All right, so for these bolts here that Kyle's working on, here and here, two on the other side, and one here, these are a five. So we got a five and a four. Kyle got all the bolts taken off for this, and when you take it off, this is what you got underneath. Now, after taking that off, we notice that there's also two Phillips heads right here, so we're gonna have to take those off. These are definitely coming off as well. I believe there are three, but I will double check and make sure. So we got four bolts that are a four. We got four bolts that are a five. And then we have these two Phillips head. So while Kyle was taking this apart, he noticed that this clip actually gets held in by that bolt. So don't miss that when you put it back on. Gotta get oh, these ones. Yep. Those look like fours. So after you flip the controller upside down, you can see underneath, you have these connectors here that you have to take off. They're all fives. So Allen key number five, or five millimeter, so I don't even know. I think go to the battery, and then these are the motor. Yep, yep, these three go to the motor here. Yellow, green, blue, all go to the motor. The red and the black go to the battery. So after you get the bolts out, Make sure that you don't lose your lock washer and your washer. Each bolt has two, so make sure you don't lose those. I'm just gonna screw them into the. That's, that's, a, good one for now. that's a good idea. There's two. Yeah. There's two Allen keys in here. Two Allen keys, back behind. Yep. Where the batteries? They look like fours. So there's one here, one here, right in where the battery sits. I want to take those out. That way we can get this piece off and free up this cable right here. 
Guys, I did forget to mention, before we're switching out this controller, Kyle went ahead and tried the bigger battery, uh, the Suron battery, in this bike with the stock controller. And it gave you a little bit more top speed. I have heard on a couple different places that it's not very good for the motor. Um, Kyle also did some research and he found out that the 72 volt is the one that fries the motor. So if you want to go ahead and risk it, go ahead and risk it, get the bigger battery, get more time. And it goes up to 39 miles an hour instead of like 34 top speed. Now that's on the bike speedometer. That's not on GPS. That's on the bike speedometer. So it might be a little less, but we never got these things over 36 miles an hour downhill. 36 was our top speed we've ever gone on these. And this thing went 39 with the bigger battery. So that's a plus. You get a little bit more speed, a lot more distance um, per ride. So if you're just looking into buying the battery and you don't quite want to pull the trigger on getting a new controller and new motor, it is possible. The bike still works. If you want more ride time on a 160 before you get the controller and before you get the motor and you're not trying to sell the motor or controller and you don't care about them, send it. Go ahead and send it. Uh, I would say it's worth it just for the ride time alone. And then you get a couple more miles an hour top speed. Once we get the new controller on and the new motor in, we'll let you know what the top speed is and how different it actually feels from the stock bike. But for now, I'm gonna get back to doing this. So after you go ahead and get those bolts off, Kyle's actually working on taking the horn off, which appears to just be one five Allen head. So it's gonna take that off. That's gonna free up some space in here. That way we can get to those wires that are back here. After we got the controller off, and we got this little, uh, I believe is the tip over sensor. After we got that off and the controller off, we noticed this little zip tie here. We're gonna go ahead and snip that, just so we have slack in this cable, which connects to the whole harness, goes to the engine, kinda has all the wires in here. It's a sweet cover. Right. Oh, some dirt got in there. <laughs> Alright, so you need this big one. Yep. Biggest one. Separate the motor. We're just going to go ahead and get the motor out of here. This is giving us a hard time trying to get these clips disconnected while being underneath there. So hopefully this frees up a little bit of wire and a little bit of play. So we're going to take this bad boy off. And unbox the new motor. See how she looks. Shizzer. <laughs> so before we go ahead and take off these big bolts to get the engine demounted from the bike we have these little bolts here that actually take off the cover that covers the belt so we're gonna go ahead and do that first and then after that we'll start taking the bolts off to get this thing off the frame what size is that Kyle? This one is a four. A four? Yes. Beautiful. Keep in mind that this spacer here and this spacer here go on the belt side of the bike. There are no spacers on this side. So keep that in mind when you're putting it back together. The spacers go on the belt side. After we got the belt cover off, we noticed, well, Kyle knew, but I noticed that we have to take this off in order to get this little belt system, belt pulley, whatever you want to call it, off. That way we can go ahead and put it on the new one. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Before we mount the motor, we're going to go ahead and crack that nut, loosen it up. That way it's nice and loose so when we don't have the leverage of it being on the frame, we can fully take it off and get this whole system off. We were trying to get that bolt off, or that nut off rather, and we kept realizing that the, the back tire was spinning. Even if I held the brake with everything I got, it was still spinning a little bit. So we went ahead and put a long screwdriver 
through the belt all the way across. And now when Kyle puts some tension on it, it doesn't move at all. So, see how this goes. She's on there, huh? There it is. That's the key right there. You want to use a screwdriver. Do not miss that step. You will be sitting here forever trying to take it off. So, once you do that, you're all set. Finish getting that bolt off. Get the engine off. And we will be all good. Once we got those four bolts out, you can easily see that this drops. And now we have slack in the belt. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it off right now. Bada bing, bada boom. There she goes. Just had to take this off. Thankfully it slipped right off. And there's this little pin. It goes in? Yeah. Right. Slide that into the new one. Toss that back on. There we go. There it is. And then the washer. Washer. It's facing out towards me. You want it bubbling out towards you. I don't know any other way to put it. But you want the washer bubbling out towards you. And then go ahead and put the net back on. Just so we don't lose it. And we'll tighten it the same way we loosened it. Yep, for sure. Now we gotta get this damn controller off. This is the hardest part so far. Motor was a lot easier. We just had to keep wiggling, keep getting our fingers in there. We finally got one of them unclipped. Once you get one of them unclipped, it's a game changer. All of them come out pretty easy. You get a lot of slack. This horn was in the way the whole time. This little cable right here was looping around things and not allowing us to pull it out. So just do your best to kind of work it back and forth. Now we're on to putting the new controller, the new motor in. I am so excited. Kyle, you pumped? Oh, freak yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The hardest part with the motor for us was getting this spacer in here with the washer and the belt tensioner and actually getting the belt tight. So what we did to get the motor on was put these two bolts in first, which are the shorter two bolts. And after we got those in, Kyle fed this through, we put the spacer on and got that in. After we did those three bolts, we realized that this was super tight to get in here. So what we did is we loosened these two bolts pretty much to the point where like, you know, you could easily move them by your finger. We loosened those two and then that uh, allowed me to kind of hold the engine and move it around for Kyle to then stick the bolt in and get it lined up. We finally got there. Uh, the belt was super loose. So we had to loosen up this bolt a little more and that way we could pull the whole motor up. I actually used the screwdriver and because Kyle has this peg support I actually put it in there for some leverage and pushed down and held down until he got the bolts in. That helped us out a lot. Now we got this all set up. We're gonna go ahead and tighten this up, put the cover back on and then get back to the controller. We obviously got it all taken off and we're ready to put it back together. So guys, we've been grinding at it for probably like a half an hour, 50 minutes to a half an hour, somewhere in there. Um, we got the motor on, we got the controller on, uh, we got this little plastic guard back on. The last two things we gotta do is put on this shield here and this little shield here, which obviously cover the motor and then in between the controller and the motor. And after that, we're all done. I, I honestly can't believe that we finally got this all figured out. It was honestly tons of fun. Uh, for a second, me and Kyle both thought that we were screwed, but we just moved on, went to the motor, and then we came back to the controller, finally got those clips disconnected, and now we're on our way to putting this thing completely back together. After we get this thing back tidy, put back together, wires exactly where they need to be. We're gonna take a quick uh, rip down the road and see how fast this thing goes, see what the torque's like. You might even do a little race between um, Gabe's 160 and this thing, and we'll let you know how it goes. Since we started this project, it's been about two and a half hours. Kyle just finished the last couple of bolts. We're gonna flip this thing over, put the battery in, Hopefully when we turn that key, it turns on. So 
You ready, bro? Skid. Skid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got power, baby. Another. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, let's yeah. go try it. Dude. What is going on, guys? It is now like a week later, and the reason why I don't have footage from the other day is because when we took this thing out after putting it together and we went down the road and tested it out, it was way too dark and you couldn't really see anything. So I am back now. Um, this thing works great. Um, it takes off from the line so much quicker. Uh, absolutely smokes the 160. And this thing keeps up with the Teleria off the line. We both neck and neck if we were gassing it. We haven't quite done like a straight um, drag race, but in the trails and everything, we're right on each other's back. So it's definitely much faster, definitely much torquier and way quicker. Um, and gets up to that top speed super, super quick. The problem that we did run into is when we first went and tested it, he was topping out at 26 or 25 miles an hour. And that is because now the bike cannot connect to the Bluetooth that it has. So we actually had to go into the harness for the bike and cut a wire. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this about the Suron, but um, on the 160, you actually have to cut a wire that is up underneath here. So instead of taking the whole bike apart, I'm going to show you where you cut it from the connector on the controller. But remember, you actually don't cut the one on the controller. You cut it from the harness on the bike. If you look right here, you got three connectors coming off of your controller. And there's a small one, and then there's a bit of a bigger one, and then there's this like rectangular shaped one. This is the guy that you're going to want to go for. There's a green and black wire right here not too sure how well you can see that but this green and black wire you're gonna want to cut that from the harness on the bike once we cut that we got up to about 36 miles an hour 36 37 um, but he did go ahead and put the 19 inch wheels on this bike so the speedometer is now not 100 percent correct we are going to do a comparison for you guys using GPS trackers. So obviously you will know the legitimate speed. And yeah, we're gonna compare it to the stock 160, the Teleria and the Suron. So we'll have like a whole cool comparison video for all four of these bikes um, that we'll just cover in one video. But until we get that all said and done, I do have a couple videos of us ripping on the trails and yeah, that's about it. So just to reiterate, you want to cut the black and green wire that connects to this connector, the rectangular one, not the square, but this rectangular one. You'll see it. It's the only connector that even has a black and green wire. So you can't really make that mistake. Let me just double check for you. Yeah, this one doesn't have black and green. So you can only really cut it from this one connector. You're looking for the green wire with a black stripe in it. And remember, do not cut it from the controller. Cut it from the harness inside the bike over here. That about wraps it up. Let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And remember to hit that subscribe button if you wanna keep up with our journey. So until next time, guys. Peace!